Hello there. Kyle Katarn here, and it is Wednesday, my droids. Let's read some Star Wars comics. Uh, welcome to Comics with Katarn. This is half of a reaction video and half of a read-along to the brand new Star Wars comics of the day, um, of which we are reading Star Wars Ewoks, issue number one. A caravan of carnage comes to Endor. <laughs> I love it. Caravan of Carnage. Referencing, obviously, Caravan of Courage, the Ewoks movie. This is a great cover, actually. Cynthia Martin. No, oh, this is dope. Yeah, I hope you guys are ready for some serious yub nub. Also, I like that the Ewoks logo very much resembles the, uh, the original cartoon Ewok TV logo. Do you guys remember that? Yeah, that's fantastic. It is. It's a very fun cover. All right, well, without further ado, Star Wars Ewoks, issue number one. A caravan of carnage comes to Endor. What kind of story are we in for here? Long, long ago, deep in an enchanted forest on the distant moon of Endor, an evil group of outsiders set up their strange machines, bringing a war from the outside galaxy. Another group of outsiders, seeking only peace for the galaxy, fought them off and restored the native's village to its once serene nature. But even after the heroes leave and new threats loom, the forest moon will always be protected by Star Wars Ewoks, Dangers from the Stars. Written by Steve Orlando, Arts, artists are Alvaro Lopez and Laura Braga. Colors by Antonio Fabella and letters by VC's Joe Caramena. Man, that guy gets a lot of work. I swear, he's doing lettering on every comic I read these days. Looking forward to this. Let's go. The Forest Moon of Endor. Ooh, God, look at this artwork, though. I love it. I love the shading technique to create the distance and the shadows of the faraway trees. And... Oh, there's so much detail in here. Yeah, we're in for a good time. I can already tell. Tell us again, Wicket. Tell us again. Oh, look, it's the Ewok babies over here. And that must be Wicket sitting in the chair. Translated from Ewokese, naturally. You having a bit of a fireside chat? We telling stories? Okay, but after that, it's bedtime. Walklings can't be up this late. At least that's what Chief Chirpa says. But it's a party! Wow, that's a lot of babies. Look at them all. It is. Just like it was not so long ago. When we drove out the cruel ones out of the forest and off our moon... But we didn't do it alone. Help came from the stars. From friends. Like Leia. Is that a little bowl of Che Mosca back there? <laughs> a rebel princess. She was the first human I met. We fought the cruel ones side by side. And we won. Blowing these little babies' minds with the story. Look at this guy in the back. He's like... <gasps> After, when the great false moon in the sky finally fell, we celebrated. Leia even honored us by choosing our forest as the site of her wedding. But she couldn't stay. Leia was a leader. She had a galaxy to rebuild. And like the best of us, Leia wasn't afraid. She promised that even if she wasn't near, she'd always be my friend. And her heart would always be with our village. Yay! Yub nub! Ichiwama! Look at these happy little Ewok babies. Walklings. You love to see it. Always. This is great. I love it. The campfire showing the intensity burning in his eyes. Woo! It's a Yub nub party in here. Man, this artwork is phenomenal. Look at this. Yeah, let's get some Yub nubs in the chat. Yub Nub Ichiwama, indeed. I swear, he has like three times this, the amount of walklings on this little platform that there were before. He's a good storyteller. Moff Edelhard's fleet. Oh, damn. Okay, I was not expecting us to tie right back into Uprising, but here we are. Moff Edelhard's fleet. That was my terrible TIE Fighter impression. Don't judge me. 
even through the hum of the ion engines. I can hear you breathing. My apologies, Moff Edelhart. Don't apologize for living. Save that for if you disappoint me. But you won't, will you? I was pleased to receive your communique. General Koyata. I thought we'd caught all of Endor's strays, but here you are. We escaped the moon, but our frigate was shattered by Death Star debris. I drifted with the other survivors until they jettisoned themselves to save air for me, the ranking officer. That's fucked up. <laughs> but I'm not here for sympathy, Moff Edelhard. I want to prove myself to the Empire. How? A weapons depot buried on the forest moon. Well hidden. I was its administrator. It's vast, Moff Edelhard, and with the right retrieval squad, I could deliver it in full. Hmm. We do need all the firepower we can get. But I don't trust you, Koyata. My file was vaporized with the Death Star. All I've got is my story, but it's the truth. Interesting. I don't know if I trust you, Koyata. You were the administrator of this, like, just cherry weapons depot that has everything Edelhard needs, and you show up right now? Could this be some sort of rebel deception? See, look, he's got me as paranoid as he is now. My file was vaporized with the Death Star. All I've got is my story, but it's the truth. Imperial credits still spend. You'll receive a sizable advance. Feel the team. Return to Endor. Retrieve your weapons for me. Succeed and you'll have my trust. Fail. And apologies will be the least of your concerns. Okay, nice. We got a little a little interlude with Edelhard there to show how this ties into the larger story being told. Meanwhile, the forest moon. As village chief, I call this meeting to order. And with the recent departure of the rebels, I am happy to welcome not just the Council of Elders, but our entire village. There is no denying it, my friends. Our world is but one tree in a much greater forest. Those who would harm us, the cruel ones, came to conquer. The rebels came to liberate. And now we must decide what to do when we receive our next visit from the stars. Chief Chirpa speaks true. There will be more outsiders, we can be sure. And we must meet them as we meet each new day's uncertainty, with bravery. Nature is a song. You taught me that, Logray. It moves with its own rhythm. But music evolves. It becomes deeper and richer when new tones are added in harmony. We can't fear that. With cooperation, with an open hand, whatever comes can join its tones with ours. That's a nice idea, Wicket. Oh, look at this guy. Look at the mustache on him. Yeah, he's got a bit of a darker voice than that. That's a nice idea, Wicket. But life is not a song. Metaphors are for shamans and philosophers. Don't bring outside music. Outsiders don't bring music. They bring weapons. They bring danger. It's a privilege to sit here in Bright Tree Village and watch the sun star rise with a smile. I am part of this village, and apart from it. Yes, I live out on the borders, far from your big fires and comfortable huts. Yeah, tempting tempters on the outskirts. So if anyone knows the virtues of watching their back, it's me, even here. Cool. So this guy's kind of a, kind of a maverick, Ewok who, go beats at the sound of his own stormtrooper helmet drum. Look at him. He kind of looks like a badass, too. He's got, like, the leaf scale mail. And look at the big scar over his eye. Like, this this Ewok has a past. Enough, Midro. You have spoken. Your point is well made. Now sit with it. As you ask, Chief Chirpa, you have always been fair. He, He's right. Midro's right. We must be wary. No, welcoming is our way. Like Wicked says, and he's a warrior too. Warrior? He's little more than a walkling. How wise can he be when he's barely old enough to attend this meeting? Oh, poor Wicked. Leave him alone, you assholes. He's a war hero. Wicked bled for this village. Gah. 
Yeah, he's totally a Chad Ewok. Look at this guy. Midro. I want to know more about Midro. Solemn Swamp Forest. Okay, look, we've landed. We've landed our Lambda. Not quite the landing I'd hoped for, for not. Oh! Is that Zuckus? Is that friend Zuckus in 4 LOM? Oh my goodness. And this is totally a Duwotin. So we got a, a scout trooper and an Imperial. Let's go. We're alive, ain't we? Coup 4 not didn't don't crash, General. That's good, because Turn Koyata doesn't hire fools. I want weapons hot, people. Mr. Fornot seems to have landed us a bit off the mark from our weapons depot. Zuckus, 4 LOM, secure the perimeter. The local fauna here may be dangerous. Cole Orvink, you're our scavenger. Read the wind, find us a heading. This is great. I'm so happy that Zuckus is back in another story. I've missed him. You'll all be paid well, provided we live. So it is in your best interest to ensure we do. And, of course, to remember who's in charge. Koyata has a deal that has not been revealed yet, I think. Zakis agreed to a recovery mission, General Koyata. Indeed. General, if protection is now paramount, a higher fee may be incurred. As you said, we are far from our intended landing site. I can find a trail I can track, but I'm no miracle worker. Neither is XX77. Kolorvank is not. I am. Though, my reach is limited. <laughs> nice. This is a Jakaro situation from Swator. We've got a droid head just mounted on a large a large guy's body. It never fails. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great combo every time. You better hope we reach the depot, Koyata. It's bad enough I'm back here. I was a scout. Almost died on Endor. And I don't play the scapegoat. Get us on track, or get out of the way. I'll reference my earlier statement, Fornot. I am in charge. Your payment depends on this weaponry's safe delivery by Moff Edelhard by my hand. Go rogue, step out of line, allow harm to come to me, and none of you will see a single... <coughs> Credit? <coughs> oh, damn. Oh, we got, we got beasties in the woods. Let's go. Yes! <laughs> oh man, haven't seen these little guys in a while. Form up! We're not alone! Fully taken by surprise. Zuckus, you useless finesman, why did you not sense this coming? Ah! It's Cock and Dulox! Fuck yeah, it's Dulox. You love it. Zuckus finds this to be an intense species! What other intel is there? Scarce notes on their dialect. Little more. They do seem spirited. They're, they're native to the moon. Totally berserk. They don't hunt. They don't kill for food. These swamp squirrels do it for fun. Oh no. No, no pay if I die, you nerf-hurting mercs. Don't just stand there. What did I hire you for? Nice. Putting in work over here. It is done. <laughs> huh. Decapitation. Okay. Okay. I see you. I wasn't expecting to go to that length. This is this is this is pretty sweet. <laughs> Their numbers dwindle quickly. Dulock underfur guards well against moisture, less so against blaster fire. You are destined for more than evisceration, General. Cole was never the poet between us, but you're quite safe now. What a comforting thing. You're destined for more than evisceration. <laughs> this Duwotin has a way with words. Safe, perhaps, but stranded. The shuttle was salvageable until our blast of fire. No matter. We'll find a way to signal Moff Edelhard's fleet once we've reached the depot. Do not underestimate this world! Our first plan must be for survival, not exfiltration. Such power. We should have foreseen. Dying Dulok. One lives, but not for long. 
Exev. It is a rare dialect. I am fluent, obviously. Speak, fallen one. Your words will be understood and remembered. Dulox, prey upon all but the great devourer. But the red ghost, we are strong. Few could hope to best us, but we were fools not to see. Fools not to recognize the adversary among you. This battle was always lost. With its last words, this creature spoke of its fears. A great devourer, a red ghost. And four LOM, who it named as an adversary of some kind. Oh, that's dope. No, that's dope. Because remember, the Ewoks revered 3PO, a protocol droid, as a god, right? Because because of the culture. Dulocks are going to share at least a little bit of that culture being on the same planet. So they're going to see 4 LOM, and they're going to have the exact same thought process. with. So they think he's like an evil god. This is, this is fun. This is really fun. And for LOM, who it named as an adversary of some kind. <laughs> uh, new reaction face just dropped. Oh my god, look at that. He's flabbergasted. Absolutely flabbergasted. No, your translation is subpar, EX77. I am the adversary. Were I to extrapolate a dark figure of sorts in the local belief system. Zuckus can work with that. Let us keep moving. This is great. And look how he's got like this dark halo around his head too. Like really leaning into the classical depiction of like sainthood. Like he's a dark figure from their local belief system. It's a great way to put it. It's nerf scat. Nothing more. I never heard of no great devourer. No adversary. And as sure as Kark ain't no red ghost. Excuse me, who is this badass? Look at him. Talk about like, talk about a crash course in excellent character design. We've never seen this Ewok before and instantly I'm fascinated. Instantly I want to know his name and his story and like, look, he's wearing a skin with like claws and, and spines and clearly it was like a very tough predator to kill. This is, this is a badass Ewok. Is this the Red Ghost? Yeah, no. Let's go. Happy Grove Forest. After that last gathering, I'm surprised you'd want to check traps with me. Oh, it's Midro. Okay, it's Midro and, and Wicked. Because, because of course it is. After that last gathering, I'm surprised you'd want to check traps with me. We are part of the same tribe, Midro. Even if we don't agree. Living out here... You're so tough, so mysterious. You were my hero when I was a walkling. All Bright Tree does is whisper that you're a loner, that you killed a Gorax all by yourself. Is your camp nearby? Did you keep its skull as a prize? My camp? My camp is all around us, wherever I lay my head. And as for the Gorax... Midro, look! A full trap! Finally! Wait, Wicket! No way. We've been checking these snares all day. I said, wait, Wicket! This isn't my first trap, Midro. Relax. You think I'm afraid of some fuzzy-tailed Verkle? Oh, what is that? <laughs> oh my god, and it's got a little face on the tail, too. And the tail is, in fact, its tongue. Oh, this is horrific. I don't know what I'm looking at, but I don't like it. <laughs> Pritka, Pritka! Is that its name, or are you just cussing it out in in Ewokese right now? That could mean like, shit, shit, you know? <laughs> ah! Come on, Wicket! Fight! I did not read this comic just to watch you die! Oh, okay, okay. We've lost the stick. It's... It's not a tail. It's not a tail! Horrifying. Horrifying that such a such a terrifying monster has this cute little fuzzy face attached to it in any capacity. Like, that is just such an upsetting... You see the little fluffy face first, poking out, and you're like, Oh, hey, little guy! And then, boom, no more head. You lunch. You lunch, like, immediately. Hutar, wicked! Run! Damn, look at Midro. He really is a badass. For once, I agree! 
Are you hurt? Are you okay? I, I'm fine, Midro. I should have known better. I just got ex so excited. It was a Temptor. That wasn't its tail. That was its tongue. This is its tail. They'd attach to help them escape from predators. Which it just did. I'm sorry. Now we've got nothing to bring back to the village. We've got you. We can always set more traps. But that's work for tomorrow. Let's head back for the day. Still gonna take the tail? I mean, hey, it's better than nothing. And if Delicious and Dungeon has taught me anything, it's that you can make some, some pretty sweet kakiyagi out of that, you know? I can't believe it. You weren't scared at all. Was that what it was like to deal with the Gorax? Only a fool wouldn't fear the Great Devourer. But that wasn't my first Temptor. I guess not. What did we take the tail for? It's not much. It won't feed the village, but if I cure it right, it'll feed me on the road. Wouldn't it be easier if you lived with us? There'd always be food. And responsibilities and vulnerabilities. It'd be easier, Wicked, but not safer. I'll always serve, Bright Tree, but worrying about others is a distraction. It's dangerous. I live alone. I fought the cruel ones, and I did it alone. I'm better alone. The village. That's the intruder call. Here we go. Come on, Midro. This time, I agree. Greetings, my friends. There is no need for alarm. Oh, that's... You know what? That's 4LOM, isn't it? You can tell because they always have, like, the jagged lines and slightly more, rec slightly more like, rectangular speech bubbles when it's robotic speech. So I'm going to go ahead and assume, based on these contact clues, that this is, in fact, 4LOM. Greetings, my friends. There is no need for alarm. Yes, look at this. On behalf of the adversary, we come in peace. A peace you'd be wise not to test. Next, Bright Tree Goes Dark. Oh, man. What kind of story are we setting up here? This is very, very interesting. And I like that we are now touching upon... Something that hasn't really been, like, riffed on at all since Return of the Jedi, which is that the Ewoks have this local belief system where protocol droids very closely resemble what they consider to be deities. And so, of course, 4 LOM would get a similar reception to C-3PO, but instead of a shining golden god, he's the adversary. He's like a dark figure from their, from their pantheon. Yeah, this was really creative. Like, it's very easy to be like, oh, it's an Ewok story. Okay, it's just going to be a bunch of yub-nub flying kites and hand gliders and like you know friendship and cute little babies but like there are so many things culturally that were just like hinted at and established in return of the jedi that like now we're developing it a little bit more and that's awesome that's all it's also awesome to see the societal ramifications of the ewoks aligning with the rebel alliance you know having having a dialogue with the entire village about what do we do when more people come from the sky like it is no longer a thing that we can deny that we are just one planet in many what do you say? We are but one tree and in a vast forest. That's how he put it. I think that's beautiful. Um, but yeah, we like it's kind of like the first contact scenario in Star Trek. You know, like once once your society, your civilization has been made aware of spaceships and warp drive and stuff, it's going to change the evolution of that society. So it's cool seeing them finally discuss this and like be brought into the modern age in a way. I'm pretty sure that Ewoks live across the galaxy and there are Ewoks that speak basic and fly spaceships and do all of that stuff. When C-3PO first encounters them in Return of the Jedi, he makes a comment about them using a very primitive dialect. If it's a primitive dialect, that implies that there are, there are more sophisticated dialects of Ewok ease also spoken in the galaxy that he has in his databanks, which means that there are like civilized Ewoks out there that eat with a fucking knife and fork and, you know, have protocol droids and land speeders and all this stuff. And so that makes me think that the Ewoks of Bright Tree Village, the Ewoks of Endor, are basically akin to, like, an un uncontacted tribe, you know, in, like, the deep Amazon jungles and stuff like that, where they're just very much insulated from, from technology and things like that. But there are Ewoks out there. Like, I'm, I think it was a comic. It might have been a novel, but there was a character who was an Ewok who spoke fluent basic, and he was a starship mechanic. You know, he was fully technologically fluent and so 
it just makes what's happening on Endor even more fascinating from like an anthropological standpoint because not all Ewoks are like this. It's just these Ewoks that are like living in this with like speaking with a primitive dialect, having this like deep rooted belief system, living in huts. Like it, it's fascinating to me. It really is. Yeah, Kaz, there's an Ewok in the in the Star Wars Hunters game operating a miniature ATST. Like that they've retrofitted with like freaking bamboo and stuff like that implies a very serious level of you know technical literacy that ewoks can achieve they're not like simple creatures they're not like you know it's it they, they go underappreciated sometimes but like they're very formidable hell play against multiple ewoks in battlefront and you'll know how formidable they are jesus christ <laughs> but this was great ewoks number one out of nowhere i actually didn't even know that this series was coming this one really snuck up on me and it was great. It was great. I can't wait to see what happens next. And I really love that this is taking place concurrently with the rest of our Battle of Jakku um, uprising crossover that's happening. Like, the reason that these Imperials and Zuckus and 4LOM have arrived on Endor is to further Adelhard's campaign right now, which is going to culminate with the Battle of Jakku. So even when we're getting these little side stories, it still ties in, and I think that's very skillfully done. And, of course, just... You know, I'm just happy I got to voice Zuckus again. Because I love doing Zuckus' voice. And I was very sad when the Bounty Hunters run ended and we weren't going to see much more of him. So, really happy that he's been brought back into the fold, honestly. Issue 2 is coming soon and I can't wait. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is the only comic that we've got for today for Comics with Guitar. But stay tuned because next week I'm pretty sure we're getting the next installment of Battle of Jakku. Um, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, closer to uh, Halloween, since we are in Spooktober right now, I also want to go back and reread some of the tales from Vader's Castle. They just released um, a new compendium that's like a, it's a comprehensive volume of all of the tales and the Vader's Castle stories that are out so far. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting my hands on that as well. Um, yes, there was also some Higher Republic comics that dropped today. Um, I am saving those for the Higher Republic stream specific that's going to be coming in the future. I'll have some more information about that later. Um... It is awesome to see the Ewoks in Endor again and to actually dive into them and not just use them as like these token little teddy bears doing exactly what they did before. Like we're expanding on it. We're taking we're taking Ewok culture and we're actually examining it a bit more. And I think that's awesome. So I'm really excited to see where this is going to go next. Um, but that's all we got for Comics with Guitar this week. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you next week for more, some more awesome Star Wars comic action. Thanks again for watching. And as always, may the force be with you.